run into some really sketchy people, but you also run into some super cool people. Live for the next generation too. Inside this shed, we have a sewn-in battery bank. To have the smallest footprint possible when it comes to bills just makes life so much simpler. You'd almost run 100% entirely off-grid. Pretty fortunate to have some nice, crispy, clean water. It's really fresh, tastes really pure, really great. This is the inside view of the Max Air fan. Here's a fun one for you. The bathroom situation. My name is Nick Sanders, also known as Captain Narkill. This fan gets like eight miles per gallon, like six miles per gallon while towing. She's thirsty. I wanted to live in my van because I was just tired of paying astronomical prices and rent to just some landlord for some tiny square box. And at the same time, my lady and I were also looking for a place to relocate. I couldn't rationalize, she couldn't either, paying these really high rent prices for something that you would never own. It's glorious. Got a little carbon filter here. You can hook it up to any hose, any spigot in a park or a business that you frequent or wherever. It's just so much easier than just throwing quarters in one of those water machines. I carried two six gallon jugs with me, so that was 12 gallons. This is one of my jugs, it's pretty handy. It's got a, it's got a pretty easy spigot on it. it. Helps to have a little towel to kind of supplement your PTs. I drained 26 cans of great stuff, spray foam into all the walls, and I also did sound deadening. As I am running a trash roux on the back, you can accumulate a ton of garbage in this thing. I got two gallons of water that just wash my hands with it or you know, do the dishes, stuff like that. It's pretty handy. It's just a pesticide sprayer. You can get them at Home Depot or Lowe's or any hardware store, really. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that think my van's really basic. You know, there's a lot of people that have these like extravagant kitchen setups. This is uh, essentially the kitchen, cook on propane. I definitely got inspired from all these super fancy Sprinter and ProMaster builds you see where they have the wood and all the cool like, you know, wall panels and stuff. I got this really cheap MDF and I put it on the ceiling. There's an inch of uh, foam insulation with the foil back behind that. A half inch plywood on the walls. The floor is three quarter ply. Also has foam insulation behind it. This Ford van came with these dome lights that were on a swivel. And going down dirt road, they would like swivel and turn themselves on. It was just really annoying. I basically just gutted the whole thing and made my own. Oh yeah, it's still working. Nice to know that it's got my back. I actually made all the curtains in this van. It's nice for privacy. If I were to do it again, though, I think I would get a cargo van. So you don't have any windows at all. They don't condensate as much. There's not that opportunity for people to look in. It's just all around, I would probably consider a cargo van to be superior to a window van, but that's just my opinion, really. I'm sure a lot of other people have more complicated, complex like things, but at the end of the day, it's just such a small space. It's just a perfect place to lay my hat every night, so it works for me. Here's a fun one for you. The bathroom situation. It's reality and it's something you have to deal with. Everything you do in van life is definitely intentional. And for me personally, I've found the pool noodle with a bag and a bucket to be the best method. And this is just my opinion. I know a lot of people that run composting toilets or like the cassette style. I even met a guy in Havasu that was using kitty litter. I can't imagine having to deal with that excrement in that way. I'd rather just bag it, tie it in a knot and throw it away. It just seems way more sanitary to me. And a lot of people don't like talking about this and we'll just graze over this entire situation. But I'm not shy and I'll tell you guys how I go number two. Gotta get your bucket, put a bag in it. The pool noodle, you run a little slit in it and it makes a really plush, comfortable toilet seat. It really is no different than your household toilet where you flush it and it just magically vanishes. It's the same thing, only it's intentional and there's no water involved, obviously, because water is a very precious resource when you live in a van. So that's how you go to the bathroom. It's raw, it's real, but it's the honest truth for me. If it's something you really want to do, if you want to go travel around in a van or a car or whatever vehicle, really, it doesn't matter. You should definitely go for it because it's a unique experience and you only get so many of those before the time is up. Rex, sit. Shake. Good boy. 
Rex, up top. Good boy, big cooch, good boy. My name is Nick Sanders. I'm just a regular guy. <laughs> I don't know. Rex loves the, loves the camera. He was a photographer in his previous life. It got kind of stony baloney there for a second, huh? <laughs> I don't even smoke weed. I don't know, man, I don't know what to say. I'm like suddenly realizing I'm not like a deep person. <laughs> This outbuilding houses this most excellent woman's cruiser. So many, a vast, you know, diverse amount. I don't even know what to say. I don't know what else to say, man. Give me some, some tips. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. What do I like to do? My favorite color is blue, and I really love pizza. This is a 45 quart ice co fridge, and it's a pretty great fridge. I'd say that a fridge is a lot cooler than a cooler because you don't have to buy ice for it. Let's say you're out somewhere really far and you gotta go into town to procure ice because your bag of ice has been you know, diluted down to a bag of water. And that's just kind of a bummer. So when you got a fridge, it's just always running off the power of the sun and it's just, it sounds kind of cheesy, but it's almost kind of a magical thing to not have to worry about ice. And I really like it a lot. Ice Co actually gave me this fridge, so I was really blessed to be in that situation. But before this fridge, I had an Alpacool and it was a third of the cost and it was a great fridge. I had no issues with it and it never skipped a beat. So you don't have to spend a fortune on a 12 volt fridge. They're pretty budget if you go with an off brand and yeah, I'd say it's, it's definitely worth it. I had a bottle of mayonnaise one time explode in a cooler in my buddy's razor and oh my gosh, that was, that was horrible. There was mayonnaise everywhere and it was, it was pretty gross. I don't know, I love this fridge. It's, it's invaluable to me. It's definitely a luxury, but it's a valuable luxury item. There's two different ways to go about van life. I suppose you can stealth camp in the city, which you're kind of like hiding out. You don't want someone to knock, you know? Personally, for me, I preferred boondocking. I would roll up to an area like this and I would stay there for quite a while, like maybe a week, you know, maybe sometimes less, but maybe sometimes longer. And for me, that was a lot easier than trying to stealth camp in the city, like getting the anxiety if someone's gonna kick you out or if some car is gonna come sideswipe you and like knock you out of your bed and injure you or if someone's gonna break in while you're sleeping in your van. Because there's bad people everywhere, but out here when you're boondocking, there's just less people. So less people equals less good people, but less bad people too. It just feels safer and I don't know, it's definitely counterculture. You run into some really sketchy people, but you also run into some super cool people. One guy in particular, his name was Kent, and I had South Dakota plates on my van when I was living in it because that was a form of address for me. So I used a mail forwarding service out in the world. A lot of these people living nomadically, they'll use Florida or Texas or South Dakota to basically use an address. But I met a guy named Kent and he was really from South Dakota. And it was funny because I kept running into this guy three different times, just completely unannounced. We weren't talking or anything. He would just show up and I'd be like, whoa, Kent's here. So it's kind of a small world. It's definitely a pro to van life for sure. It's the camaraderie between you and others living a similar lifestyle. Up here on the roof, I cannot recommend these fans enough. It looks like something out of Alien vs Predator, but it's made by a company called Max Air and it has a little rain shield on it, which is cool because you can keep it open in the rain and in the elements. It can exhaust as well as blow air in too. So at night, a lot of times I'll suck the air out and during the day I'll turn it into basically a ceiling fan and it'll blow air in. This is the inside view of the Max Air fan. The Max Air fan, I really, really like this fan a lot. Having a house was always kind of a dream. It was almost like an unattainable dream. It was like the carrot on the stick type of thing. It was like something we always wanted to get, but we couldn't, it was like out of reach. And we realized that we couldn't afford a house where we grew up in our home state. So we just looked over the horizon somewhere else that we could afford. And it was a goal that we wanted to, to achieve. So achievement unlocked. Just a manufactured home was cool with us. It actually has axles under here behind the skirting that you can't see, but it's essentially just a trailer. It's on a well, it's a super deep well. The water is really pure, we can drink it. It's an 80 foot well and pretty fortunate to have some nice crispy clean water. It's really fresh, tastes really pure, really great. It's providing us two out of the three things that we need, shelter and water. Inside this shed, we have a sewn-in battery bank. At the end of the day, it's a battery bank and an inverter, and it's just juice in the sun. And I love the location, too. I, I love it out here. It's, this is an awesome place to be. It's got 19 kilowatts of solar, and for us, that was something that was really important, and we settled on this place.
this is 19 kilowatts of solar. A kilowatt is essentially a thousand watts. I'm terrible at math, but that's a lot of power for this tiny little manufactured home, which is one of the reasons why we bought this place was just for sustainability reasons. This house could almost, now we have a lot more stuff running, could almost run 100% entirely off grid. Whether it be for a house or a van, you can expect to pay about a dollar a watt for a solar panel. So your average 100 watt panel is gonna cost around 100 bucks. But something really critical to point out, this is just my opinion, is it's better to own your panels. If you have a sales guy come knock on your door and tell you, hey, do you have a meter that looks like this? You could be eligible for a solar incentive. Well, next thing you know, you're gonna get a monthly payment and that kind of just dilutes the savings. So it's better to save up and get a system completely paid for because then you 100% own it and all the power is yours. One of the biggest misconceptions I think people have about solar systems is that they're super complicated and you need a professional to install it. And yeah, the one in my house is a little complicated. I understand a large majority of it, but there's some stuff that's a little over my head. But when it comes to 12 volt vehicle solar systems, it couldn't really get any simpler. There's a black wire and a red wire and it just comes through this orifice, goes through the roof, and it comes down into this 40 amp MPPT charge controller. This runs down this wall, goes under the bed into a 310 amp hour AGM battery bank. And from there, it just splits off all over this van like a spider web. All you gotta do is just put the panels in parallel and then run that into a charge controller and run that into a battery. And basically you're just harvesting the energy from the sun and you're storing it. I would definitely consider this a luxury, but if you're really serious about living in your car, your van, your truck, whatever, it's, it's pretty important and it makes life so much easier. This is just my personal opinion, but to have the smallest footprint possible when it comes to bills just makes life so much simpler. Like you could finance all kinds of wild stuff, but then you're gonna get, you know, at the end of the month, all these bills just unloaded on you and just makes life so much more complicated and difficult. If you can just you know, live within your means and not reach outside of that, at least for me personally, it made things so much simpler. And that's why I have a 40 Conaline and not a Sprinter. That's why I have a house out in the desert in Arizona and not a mansion in Malibu. You go for what you can afford and try to finance and have the least amount of bills possible is something that's been really helpful for me in my life. Got some totem pole cactus, some aloe V, got some elephant succulent. Hopefully in a couple years it'll grow together and look like something, I guess. This is pretty cool. This is our well box. Everything to run the water for this house is inside this box. But inside, there's a little pressure reservoir. It kind of maintains pressure and holds enough water so that way, every time you turn the water on, the well doesn't have to kick on. It kind of saves the motor. But even bigger than that, we have this giant 2,500 gallon tank behind it. And this is cool because if the well ever went out of service for whatever reason it broke or something bad happened to it, we'd still have this 2,500 gallon tank. You don't necessarily need to bury it in the ground. It might stay slightly cooler that way, but it just kind of is better than having this giant tank blocking the view. It's just some crystal clear, pure water. So nothing really to worry about with it. Very little maintenance, if any at all. I think it's important to not only live intentionally, but to live for the next person too. I saw a kid in California a few years ago, slam dunk a bunch of fast food wrappers into a storm drain. And I don't know why that stuck with me. There's just certain little things that stick with a person, I guess. He lost sight of, of the bigger picture. Like, yeah, it might not affect him personally, but if everyone did that, what kind of future would we all have? So I think it's really important to not only live intentionally, but live for the next generation too. So it doesn't affect you, but maybe it affects the next guy or the next, next guy's kids or the next, next guy's kids, kids. And, it's just really important to plan for stuff like that because at the end of the day, it's a pretty small world, like this place we're in right now. This is a free open area, it's on federal land and if we didn't take care of it, it could be taken away so easily. So be happy with what you got. We're pretty thankful to be here. This is a beautiful place and it's because we're taking care of it. Hopefully it stays open and public lands are just that, they're public. So take care of the next, next guy's kids too, if you can.